Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to present our early research results. <clears throat> Um, first, I would like to tell you about the vision beyond uh, this research. Surgery is still a fairly mechanical process. Basically, we open, we cut off, and we close. Um, laparoscopic surgery is performed in a closed environment. And therefore, this environment can be, um, in theory, controlled by several means and steered, such physical means, chemical means, drugs, antibodies, particles, genes, etc. This is not possible by definition in open surgery. Uh, and uh, it's a big chance for us, minimally invasive surgeon, to allow modern medicine to enter the operating field if we leave the mechanical area. And uh, it might be that this approach called therapeutic captain peritoneum might allow a quantum leap in surgical outcomes. The first application for this uh, principle is the PIPAC pressurized intraperitoneal isol chemotherapy which is a drug delivery technique with superior pharmacological properties for treating peritoneal metastasis. Uh, this has been demonstrated in vitro, ex vivo, and in vivo, and the results are published. In the clinical setting, promising results have been obtained in treating peritoneal metastasis in ovarian, gastric, and colorectal cancer, including uh, a high efficacy and uh, high tolerability in a regulatory phase two trial. And uh, recently, we have uh, uh, investigated in the large animal model the effect of adding electrostatic, electrostatic loading to, um, as an adjunct to aerosol form and artificial hydrostatic pressure um, to uh, further improve drug tissue. Uh, for this first in human application, uh, we used uh, approved drug in the off-level setting, and both the pipe pack technology and the electrostatic precipitating technology are available on the market and C certified. And the institutional board expressed no objection. The technical setup is easy. First, the abdomen is insufflated as usual with CO2 at 12 millimeter mercury uh, and 37 degrees centigrade. Two trockers plus a brush electrode are, are inserted into the, the abdomen. Here, the brush electrode. And the aerosolizing device B is inserted into a trocar under videoscopic control and the pressurized therapeutic aerosol installed. After electrostatic loading and precipitation, the abdomen is exsufflated over a closed uh, aerosol waste system to protect, of course, uh, the involved personnel. So here you see um, the setting, you see here the aerosol, the therapeutic aerosol which is installed. And look now precisely at the left side when the nurse is pushing on the button within 15 seconds, the aerosol precipitate means that the drug is completely taken over into the tissue. Uh, so the three patients we uh, treated had a lateral disease, peritoneal metastasis of hepatobiliary pancreatic origin with an expected median survival of less than three months. Um, and um, they received uh, uh, altogether 10 PIPAC and 4 e pack and all three received combined palliative systemic chemotherapy, which was interrupted in two cases, which is interesting that we had some kind of response here, all patients, uh, radiological uh, response uh, in two out of three patients, um, uh, two complete and one partial histological regression, and we had a survival in two patients of uh, around 11 to 12 months, and one patient with a gallbladder cancer and peritoneal metastasis is still alive 22 months after diagnosis and 18 months after first uh, PIPAC without histological evidence of disease. I show you a radiological example. The first patient you see here, the peritoneal carcinomatosis and ascites, and after uh, this combined therapy, uh, ascites has disappeared, and uh, the peritoneal carcinomatosis has regressed. And this is the lady with uh, um, the um, peritoneal carcinomatosis from a gallbladder cancer. You see here, uh, it's perhaps difficult at this magnific 
calcification, uh, the infiltration, small nodular infiltration of uh, the fatty tissue, and here you see uh, a tumor with an aquatic uh, center, and you see after application um, uh, regression of the nodes, but which uh, surprises very much also uh, some regression of the primary, which it's difficult to explain, but it's just a fact. So uh, the safety data in these three patients were okay. So we had, as uh, for PIPAC, a significant systemic response, uh, culminating on a third postoperative day, but we had no uh, significant liver or renal toxicity. Uh, patient reported about slight abdominal pain, uh, CTC grade one to two, uh, but we had no severe local toxic on the bowel, in particular no uh, specific gastrointestinal symptoms and no bowel perforation. And uh, at the real laparoscopy, we had no significant bowel adhesions. Conclusions? Well, it's a very early to draw any conclusions. What we can say is that uh, EPIPAC is a novel procedure providing another potential means of delivering drug into the peritoneal cavity. It's easy to perform and it might reduce operating time considerably, up to 30 minutes as compared to PIPAC. Uh, it can be safe and obviously it can induce regression, at least in combination with other procedures uh, of peritoneal metastasis in a biologic aggressive tumors such as hepatobiliary and pancreatic uh, adenocarcinoma, of course. Now we have several uh, challenges to manage. Uh, we have to, uh, each therapy will have um, uh, success, failures, indications, and contraindications. We have to determine that to select the drugs, optimize the physical chemical parameters to develop advanced formulation, and to design proper clinical trials according to ECI uh, GCP. Thank you for your attention.